to Power Lunch. Wilson Bailey Homes of Con, or better known as WBHO, reported a slight decline in headline earnings per share, and that was for the year to end June. The construction group saw revenue, though, jumping by almost a third to 23 billion rand. Joining us now to unpack the numbers is Chairman Mike Wiley. Mike, those numbers, I suppose, in themselves are a big story. Big revenue growth, but a profit decline. Your profit margins, depending on where you want to look at it, uh, were either down by one full percentage points or, in fact, even more at the operating level. From an outsider's perspective, it would say you've got a lot more business, but it wasn't really that profitable. Alec, yeah, um, nice to see you again. Um, Alec, yes, it's, it's been an interesting year, you know, to have that sort of growth and then uh, make basically the same amount of profit. Um, but I suppose one could look at it as a year of consolidation. Um, and uh, we have come through tough times where the margins, you know, to get work we've had to tender on much lower margins. And uh, we've had a few problem contracts. Um, so I think we, we're pretty happy to have come out virtually square on last year. But that increase in turnover gives us a good base to move forward from. Bottom line, uh, your profit margin, the money you put into the bank or put into shareholders' uh, attributable profits was 2.9%. That doesn't leave much margin for error. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully, um, I believe there's only upside. There's not much downside from this point. And when last um, were you here at 2.9%? Phew, long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. And I think it's because that revenue has, has grown. You know, the, I mean, the company, you know, it's a great company. And to, to have that sort of revenue when you're not really pushing it. I mean, we haven't been pushing revenue. We're looking for quality of earnings. So to have that growth of 33%, and um, it's still looking positive, you know, for, for this coming year. So... It, it really does show that you know the fundamentals, good management team, all that is, is in place. We've just got to improve those quality of earnings. And, you know, and that really in construction means just don't make mistakes, don't have bad contracts, and really concentrate and make sure the guys can cope with what they've got. While we're talking about the returns, it doesn't look that clever having a business where you're only making 2 Rand 90 out of every 100 Rand's worth of business that you're achieving. But the equity returns aren't bad. I mean, you're still at 16.5% yeah. um, <coughs> compared with, well, 20% last year. Is that likely to be a level that uh, in the long term you'll be able to generate? Look, I think we would, our target, you know, f is, is 20%. And um, it's disappointing to be down at 16. And uh, we normally are higher than that. And I think if we hadn't have had these few bad contracts, you know, I think we would have, we would have been close there. So... Um, and those were bad contracts primarily in Australia, which is now half yeah, the business. Yeah. And um, but I think, um, you know, so Australia's got a lot of upside. It's a tough market over there, obviously, with the strong dollar, um, Australian dollar, and, um, you know, the economy's um, under quite a bit of pressure. But um, I think we, we're well placed there. You know, we're up to 1.2 billion. We also had about a 50% growth in, in turnover there. So, and that was a lot of restructuring as well. So. Um, I think we're pretty happy with the management teams that are now in place and, um, and I think the teams we've got in place now can really take it forward the next 13 years. You know, we've been there 13 years basically from nothing. Um, so, um, you know, Australia is a, it's a tough market, but um, it's really good to be there, you know, the way our RAND is going and, and that sort of thing. Interesting you say 13 years. I was reading over the weekend that Anglo-American has been in South America for 40 years. <laughs> and <laughs> our South African companies certainly have expanded quite well. Yeah. In these results, though, you have an additional provisioning of 91 million rand. In other words, you thought the Competition Commission was going to fine you X, but in fact it turned out to be X plus 91 million. What happened there? Um, we did our best, you know, what we thought was a fair fine to, to pay on, on, on the numbers we, we saw but, um, and all the criteria that they used for the, for the fine. Um, we didn't see eye to eye at the end on the criteria used and, and therefore the percentages which you get to. We eventually ended up at 3.9% of our turnover. Um, we, we thought it should be about 3 or less than 3. Um, so that was very disappointing. but. You know, we had to settle, get this thing behind us. We didn't want to um, not agree. And, um, and, you know, at the end of the day, um, we, we did make some mistakes and we must move on. Roger Jardine from Avenge. Uh, now, just to put people into perspective, there are three big, well, the big three in South Africa, yeah. Marion Roberts, Avenge and yeah. yourselves. Uh, he came on, he sat in that chair, in fact, the day that he resigned. And he said that once he discovered what was going on in the construction industry after having been there for a few weeks, he wanted to leave, but he thought he would see things out. How, you've been a, a veteran 
uh, for more than 30 years in, in your company. How do you, how do you react to uh, that kind of a, a, a comment? Look, I suppose you know, he's talking from a vantage point of view, but you know, from WBHO what I see, and I don't want to be in denial about anything, but really you know, we, we um, gave the commission everything. You know, they didn't have to ask for everything. Everything was put on a plate to them. We uncovered everything. That was the deal we had with them. And um, you know, out of these thousands of bids that we, we, we looked through to see where they could have been, you know, eventually we, we were awarded six contracts that had some sort of um, cover pricing associated with them. Six contracts over 10 years from eight um, <coughs> independent tendering divisions around the country. Um, you know, that's a minute um, portion of our turnover. It's a minute portion of our of, of, our, rev of our revenue. So um, I think that um, this whole thing maybe is not in perspective, you know, and I think this construction industry, it's a great industry. It's a very competitive industry. There's no foreign contractors that can compete here. We've got such a lot to offer and really we've just got to hopefully try and put this whole thing in perspective and, and help, you know, the government build the country and, you know, avert, um, alleviate poverty. That's what we're here for. So you're not expecting <coughs> that Roger Jardine's departure is going to spark a whole lot more resignations? No, I don't think so. Certainly no. not from you and your group? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Our guys are strong. <coughs> Just getting back to Australia, it does now generate half your revenues but only a fifth of your profits. Yes. Is that something that you can change in future? Um, yes, I think we've, you know, we've, we've restructured there this year. As I say, we, we've, you know, we've been there from nothing for 13 years, getting it up to 1.2 billion. And really, when you've had that sort of growth in that time, you really do need to relook at the whole thing, which we've, we've spent about two years in this restructuring. And um, I think we've got great teams in there, and we're well positioned in all the different places. So I just hope that the Australian economy can give us the work we need, um, because it is, it is, you know, under pressure. But um, we, 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 we're pretty happy that um, we really are a tier one contractor over there, which is going to open a lot of doors for us. What I'm getting at <coughs> is you've got three, nearly three and a half billion rands worth of cash reserves. Yeah. Where would the best place be for that? There's been a lot of uh, argument about lazy balance sheets, how much cash yeah. you should keep on your balance sheet, etc. Clearly, you haven't declared a special dividend, so you're not looking to give that back to shareholders at this point in time. Where would you put it? Um, you know, we'd, um, we've got about four billion worth of, worth of guarantees out there. A lot of those guarantees are supported by cash. There's a lot of working capital in Africa all over the place. So, you know, when you're doing 27 billion, yeah, tw 24 billion, you really do need quite a lot of uh, working capital. And I think you'd have to be on the conservative side. The banks like us to be on the conservative side. So I think as long as we're getting that return of equity, we don't let that drop anywhere lower than it is. So I, I would think that if we can have another three good years, then maybe that's the time to talk about maybe buying, our sh buying some of our shares back. And, uh, because I don't think there's many management teams out there that are going to do better than ours. Mm. So you're not in a position right now where you feel you've got any... Uh, laziness in your balance sheet. No, no, we're happy with it is. It is maybe slightly lazy, but that's, we, we'd prefer it that way. Mark, if you did have 10 billion rand that fell into your lap, where would you put it? <laughs> Not in your personal lap, but in Wilson Bailey's lap. Um, where would you go into Africa or would you, would you acquire um, a South African You know, African Africa, Africa's been, you know, it's, it's a pity Africa's come off. I mean, everybody knows that now. Our, a lot of our order book has dropped because of Africa and um, yeah, no, it's, a, it's a difficult one. I just think we, you know, we really need to just um, consolidate for the next three years and really work on improving the, the... So I don't know what we would do with another 10 billion. You know, we, we, we don't want to go and buy any more. We've, we, we've grown such a lot. Um, I think we'll be at, you know, at 30 billion in, in a few years' time. So um, I think we just need to really keep our feet on the ground and run this business really well and um, improve those quality of earnings. The market liked your results today. Share price is up 2.7 percent as we speak good. right now. Um, is <coughs> this uh, a, a performance that obviously next year you'd hope to improve on? Uh, operating profit down, headline earnings down slightly, dividend only up, uh, in, in fact below inflation. Um, yeah, look, the, um, the company's in good shape, as I say. The, the management team is good, the balance sheet is strong, we had good cash flows this year again. Um, and the, the, the pipeline is good for work, you know, so our order book is really high, um, <coughs> well up. 
And um, I think with that healthy pipeline, even though you know there's a concern of government spending um, not going as fast as it, it should, um, this, it, that does seem to be overcome by a lot of other positives throughout the business. So. Um, yeah, I, th I, th I think um, you know we sh we should be improving. You know, from from this point, I think um, we quite should I say we 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 quietly optimistic. Well, you certainly don't have another ninety one million that you're going to have to write off <laughs> in the year to come because of the Competition <coughs> Commission. Thank you, and that was uh, Mark Wiley, the chairman of WBHO.